Here we have the symbolic item that designates a shrine from a temple, and that's the Tori gates, the shrine gates. So when you enter through here, it is believed that you're entering through the outside world into the sacred ground of the gods, which live in the sh shrine grounds. Usually you bow and enter. And you never actually go through the direct center because that is considered where the god travels. So you just go to the left or right of that. We have just entered the shrine and temple. And usually a shrine and temple are separate as they were separated in the Meiji period of 18, in 1868. Um, but this one is still interesting because it's in its original form uh, as being a both the same grounds, a mixture of Buddhism and Shintoism. You can see the Buddhist um, influence as well as the original place of Buddhism, the Hind Hindu influence here, which is why some of them look like that. So this shrine and temple grounds were originally started in 767. So here we have 12 statues, rather looking like young children, but they're all with animals, which represent the 12 zodiac um, cycle of years. And the first year, is the year of the mouse. And here is someone with two uh, mice. 2020 is actually also the year of the mouse. Wow, and there's a real rabbit. <laughs> and from here, we'll make our way to the main deity of Kanon, which is uh, originally a, thought to be a Hindu goddess. And here we just have some more interesting statues that are on the grounds of this shrine and temple area. Here is a Buddhist statue. This Buddhist statue is interesting because you might see him, um, this Buddhist deity here, holding his ear open. And this is um, where you would come to pray for or ask for forgiveness for sins, as it were. So it's almost like giving confession to a statue. We have the Buddhist statues. There's about 50 of them here called, in Japanese, Rakan. Um, these are Buddhist saints of past times. And they're all really intricately depicted here which is really interesting really nice to see a variety and quite a large of them and the reason they're all here people have uh, donated money um, quite a large sum of money and um, their donation has been represented by these statues and their names are written on the plaques but it makes for quite an interesting atmosphere and another famous thing about this Shrine and Temple. Akasaka Kami no Yama Shrine and Hozenji Temple both have a different name. Is that um, these lotus flowers called Madarasu are quite unique, quite rare in Japan. And they'll be coming into bloom very soon. So I'll try to come back and get a picture of them when the white flower buds. But they were originally planted it's, it is said a thousand years ago. And in Buddhist lore, the lotus is quite symbolic because from the mud and muck and dirt, a beautiful flower can bud. And that's sort of representative of the Buddhist philosophy there.
getting a nice view now. We've yet to see the shrine, which will be up there. We'll head up there soon. We're just getting to look at all the statues again. A bit of the structure itself. you a little bit about Shintoism which is interesting it's the original belief system of Japan uh, it's animistic it's belief in the, the powers um, of nature so sometimes rocks are sacred uh, animals the fox and the the raccoon uh, trees things are uh, sacred alive uh, so it's very much an animistic belief system which um, is the original belief system uh, to Japan, and it is Japanese. Uh, here we are at the the grounds where there's a shrine and a temple. A temple is Buddhist, and Buddhism came from India to China uh, to Korea and eventually here to Japan. And the thing about Buddhism, which is interesting, is that it came here basically in the seventh century, um, but it coexisted here peacefully with Japan because the Japanese at the time believed in many gods and so Buddha was just basically another god uh, so they accepted him accepted Buddhism and the interesting thing is Buddhism also found its place here in Japan because Shintoism was the spiritual beginning uh, belief system of Japan it allowed their for their spirituality for their belief in nature for their um, hopes for a good crop etc uh, but Buddhism all already had a, a code. It had uh, uh, the idea, for example, that good deeds lead to a better afterlife, uh, it, karma, and things like that. So it provided a moral structure, which uh, in some ways Shintoism didn't have. So they both coexisted peacefully, for the most part, um, and usually on the same grounds, because this made sense. But... What happened was, in 1868, the Meiji period, Shintoism and Buddhism were separated. So this shrine and temple on the same grounds here in this town is quite rare, which is fun. Um, because it's just one of those things. It's not super famous. It's rare, but it's not super famous. But it's just one of those things in Japan. Um, you can go almost anywhere and find something of interest, just historically, really is so old and so much things going on so here we'll take a look at the uh, the shrine there was a sumo tournament held here in the 18 hundreds and uh, it's kind of a rare picture representing mm. Oh, oh. Ah, that's a picture representing the original wood painting of the sumo tournament that was held. ここ、こっちなのにやった。大会ですか?うん。この神社に昔ね、あの、この、もう 3 I'll just head on out. <laughs> it's like this. Uh, 
and as we're leaving the, the shrine grounds back to the lotus pond and the statues and what's quite convenient you could say is that Shintoism and Buddhism even though it was officially separated by the state in the Meiji period it's still they both still hold an important place in Japanese people's lives uh, there's an expression that Japanese are born Shinto married Christian and die Buddhist um, the Christian thing is really just for uh, kind of romantic marriage but the Shinto thing is uh, really quite used for when the children are born coming of age ceremony when they're three five and seven years old uh, weddings still um, but Christian weddings are sometimes just for romantic purposes there's not too many Christians in Japan but Buddhism also holds a place uh, in Japanese lives and up here we would see that there's a graveyard which is connected to Buddhism so um, the afterlife is sort of reserved for uh, Buddhist faith and praying to um, ancestors that have passed away we'll just get a quick look at the landscape from the top behind me at the moment is actually the grave site where the Buddhist burial stones are placed and as most Japanese are cremated, the family members, various family members, are put into the same spot. I'm not going to put that on video. You get a pretty good view of the shrine and then the temple. And just people going to, walking through. It's a way to get to the park or get to the supermarket as well. Just go for a walk. leave the shrine and temple walk back out to the suburb and then the sign here reads Kiyotsukete o kairi ma mase Kiyotsukete means please take care o kairi kudasai mase means please take care on your way home and that's the polite form to say it so yeah, just being nice thank you for coming take care on the way home yeah so that's it that was uh, the local shrine and temple that's been around for 1,300 years um, coming from uh, Canada it's a heck of a long time and it's not very famous there was only a few people there today but uh, that's what I like about Japan I mean you can go almost anywhere and find something that's historically interesting and almost rare but no one really goes to it there's basically uh, almost 80,000 shrines almost about the same amount of temples in Japan there's only about 60,000 convenience stores in Japan so there's a heck of a lot of shrines and temples um, they're basically almost everywhere you go you'll find one um, obviously the biggest famous ones are you know known in the books known on National Geographic on TV whatnot but uh, if you just came to Japan and explored a few places you always find some interesting ones wherever you go and this is, happens to be the one in my local area <laughs>